Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I am your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode number 344, I am welcoming to the show Kayla Craig. The book of prayers that I have created are just simply prayers that you can borrow, prayers that that can become your own. And so I kept, you know, there, there's there, there's something so beautiful about so many different types of prayer. Yeah. Just simply sitting and being still and listening can be so transformational and frustrating sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but but can be really, really a powerful form of prayer. There's also, you know, just that kind of in the moment, praying out of the deep wells of your heart, and that's beautiful too. But, you know, if we're honest with each other, there are moments where we just don't have those words. And and the prayers of another can comfort us and can lift our arms up when we can't lift our arms up and, you know, say, you don't have the words to pray, take mine. And so once I heard that liturgy is the prayer of the people, and I just find that so comforting. As I as I pray, I know somebody has gone through this. I'm not the first person to experience, you know, whatever I'm going through. Maybe somebody's even praying this right now. And somebody has prayed and will pray. And it's just this beautiful uniting of the body. Kayla is the mother of four kiddos, two of whom came into their family through adoption, one domestic and one international. And today she's coming here to talk about liturgies for parents. She has started a very popular Instagram account with that name, Liturgies for Parents, and has a new book, To Light Their Way, a collection of prayers and liturgies for parents. And I thought it'd be great to have her come on and introduce us to another prayer tool in our tool belt. You know, we've done an episode on listening prayer and blessing prayer, and I feel like there's a place in our faith journey for liturgy and breath prayers. And so I was thrilled to connect you with Kayla, particularly if you are walking through a hard season yourself where you are struggling to find words uh, to bring you hope in your season. Kayla is also someone who does have an immune compromised child and has spent a lot of time at home still at home with all that's going on in the world. And so if you are in that place, I hope I could introduce you to Kayla and be encouraged. Please don't miss, about 20 minutes in, she prays a very powerful prayer over us. And if you need to hear that, um, I want to make sure you do. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Hey, Kayla, welcome to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I, like I said, can't believe we haven't had you on the show before. (laughs) Well, I'm just, I'm just sad that I had never, you know, got to like soak in all your goodness. And then I realized I was seeing your name all over the place. And I'm like, wait, Heather (laughs) immediately follow, like where, where has this been all my life? Thank you. (laughs) You're really kind. Well, thank you. I love connecting listeners to different people and resources that will help them. And so y'all, Kayla is a mom to four, two through adoption with some special needs and, and just an amazing resource for y'all with liturgies. Can you kind of walk us through this journey to discovering liturgies and, and then we'll get further into like what they are, what they aren't and how to help parents with that. So how did you even start? Yes. Well, just like for a very brief overview for somebody that's listening that might not even know, you know, liturgy, what does that even mean? That does that mean going into church and a worship? <laughs> or, yeah. um, you know, when, when I say that, when you say it right now, we're talking just like the prayer of another. Mm. Um, so as you mentioned, I have four wonderful kids. And when my daughter was three, she has Down syndrome and other medical and developmental needs. She had a respiratory virus that got very serious um, very quickly, and she ended up in the intensive care, and she was sedated and on a ventilator, and then gradually put onto an oscillator, which is a word I didn't even know, but it's a machine that's even stronger, totally breathing for her. It was very scary. She was kind of in this 
thin space of life and death. And, you know, it's every parent's nightmare, right. To be, yeah. to be watching your child and wishing that there's something you could do and feeling just completely powerless. And my husband's a pastor and so many wonderful people at our church and friends and family were saying, we're praying for you. You know, we're praying for Eliza and for the doctors. And I just felt so depleted, Heather. I just felt like yeah. I didn't have anything left in me. And I had a lot of doubt and I was really like wrestling, like, God, where are you? You know, like, do yeah. you even hear my prayer? What, what should I even pray? You know, just kind of a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it's like the machines are beeping and my husband and I were trading nights, you know, so the other parent could be with our kids while the other parent was with our daughter. And I am also a podcaster. And as you know, sometimes with podcasts, we get to have sneak peeks in people's books, right? Yeah. And I was one of the nights when I was home, I was checking my mail and there was a little book of prayers and they were very short, like very, very, very short, like one line. And it was in that moment that I was like, okay, maybe I can pray this. I don't have a lot of words right now. I don't even know what I believe, but I believe that there is a God that hears me. And maybe I can borrow these prayers when I don't have the words of my own. Yeah. And that kind of buoyed me, you know, in one of the, the hardest moments of our life. And, you know, Eliza did come home and she has a lot of needs still. And we pray a lot and I still wrestle and wonder, you know, like, will she ever speak? Will she ever walk? Will she ever be able to feed herself? Like lots of different um, wonderings and questions. But in that, I feel like I know that God is with me. Um, and, and I needed that reminder. And so that was kind of my, my first introduction into the comfort that the prayers of another can provide when you just don't have the words. So relatable to anyone walking through uh, circumstances they do not want, circumstances that are uh, completely overwhelming and out of control. And having gone through that myself, I, with and diff, not with my child, but with a parent, you do borrow the faith, borrow the hope, and to have the words when you come from a background of faith and you know that, quote unquote, you should be seeking God out, but then you're just lost. Like, what, what do I say? I don't, do I pray what I want? Do I dare trust? You know, like, what if I ask for this and then it doesn't happen? So I'm really grateful that you shared that. And I, I know there is a mom listening who is maybe in a hospital room right now and that encouraged her. So thank you so much for that. I told you that growing up, I feel like I was given the message that there was something wrong with liturgy. Mm. And so I'm, I would love to kind of talk through for the mom that maybe that's somewhere embedded in her, that this is wrong. What would you say about that? You know, that's, it's just so interesting because we all come at our views of prayer with the traditions we grew up in or didn't yeah. grow up in, you know? And so it's like <laughs> yeah. that, that kind of unpacking of well, where did that idea come from and why do I believe that? And, you know, I didn't grow up in a quote unquote, super liturgical tradition or denomination. Mm -hmm. So basically that means that we didn't read a lot of prayers together in our worship you know, sometimes we pray the Lord's prayer, but, you know, pretty much it was just, it, it followed a different pattern. The book of prayers that I have created are just simply prayers that you can borrow prayers mm -hmm. that, that can become your own. And so I kept, you know, there, there's, there, there's something so beautiful about so many different types of prayer, you know, yeah. Just simply sitting and being still and listening can be so transformational and frustrating sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but but can be really, really a powerful form of prayer. Um, there's also, you know, just that kind of in the moment praying out of 
the deep wells of your heart. And that's beautiful too. But, you know, if we're honest with each other, there are moments where we just don't have those words and, and the prayers of another can comfort us and can lift our arms up when we can't lift our arms up and, you know, say, you don't have the words to pray, take mine. And so once I heard um, that liturgy is the prayer of the people, and I just find that so comforting as I, as I pray, I know somebody has gone through this. I'm not the first person to experience, you know, whatever I'm going through. I I'm maybe somebody's even praying this right now. And somebody has prayed and will pray. And it's just this beautiful uniting of the body. And it's just one, you know, kind of tool in our toolbox to enter into the conversation that I think God is already having with us every day and and taking a a minute to actually listen and, and be transformed, you know? I think you made a few amazing points. First, getting really curious about where is this coming from? right? Mm, Yeah. So often with anything with faith, we're like, okay, did this come from (laughs) truth in biblical truth? Or is this coming from an experience? And I would even say Jesus prayed quote unquote liturgy from the Hebrew faith. And there Mm. were scripture from the old Testament that he repeated in his prayers and Um, reminded people and prophecies that were repeated to remind people of this unifying truth of who God is and what was promised. And then I also love that you talked about this. I'm not alone, which obviously we're big fans of around (laughs) here, but it goes even to that. Like when someone picks up your book and you have these words in front of you, it even tells them, wow, Kayla kind of gets what I'm going through because here are some words that she wrote down. And then to know, I mean, I think it's like 40,000 people over on your Instagram, all these people resonate with these words. I am not the only one who needs to be reminded of this today. And that is a gift of community. And like you said, another great point you made that this isn't just, this is a tool in our toolbox of prayer. And we've done several episodes on listening prayer and blessing prayer and the way the Holy Spirit works and groans on our behalf. God is not limited. So to have this option as a tool when we don't have words is such a gift. So I'm so thankful for you in creating this. Hey, y'all, are you looking for the perfect gift for the teen or tween girl in your life? Something that she will love and that you can trust? Well, the Simply Be box is a faith-based subscription box for teen and tween girls filled with fun, positive, on-trend items, and encouragement to simply be who God created her to be. So what's inside a Simply Be box? Well, each box is focused around one of what they call the B attitudes. Do you get it? Be you, be strong, be kind, be a friend. So many of reminders of who God created each girl to be and how he wants them to live. So inside, she's going to find something to read, like a devotional book, Bible study, do a craft, a game, a puzzle, wear clothing, jewelry, eat a healthy snack or sweet treat, display, candy, cross, sticker, magnet, use a health and beauty product or accessory or gadget. The box ships out quarterly. There's a fall, a winter, a spring, and a summer box. And there are three ways that you can give it. Either an annual subscription that prepays four boxes and saves you money, including free shipping. There's a seasonal subscription, which auto renews each quarter until you pause it or cancel it. And that also includes, they all include free shipping. Or a one-time box, perfect gift for any occasion. And I know there's a lot of subscription boxes out there that offer amazing products. And you may be wondering, what makes Simply Be Box different? Well, you know that getting a box in the mail is always fun and it creates a lot of excitement and it gets your girl's attention. But this Simply Be Box has a bigger goal in mind because through this subscription box and the community, it helps teens grow in their relationship with Jesus, know and love how they're uniquely created and encourage them to live out their faith and be a light in this world. The founder of Simply Be Box, Ellen Cooper, she's a mom of two teen girls. She's disciples, tweens, and teens throughout the community. 
So she has a front row seat to the joys and the struggles of girls these days. She is passionate about coming alongside them. So Simply Box has provided a discount code for our Don't Mom Alone podcast listeners. Use the code DMA10 to get $10 off your purchase. If you head over to their website, Simply B, remember it's B-E, simplybbox.com, subscribe today and she will get her winter box just in time for Christmas. You can also follow them on Instagram at simplybbox. So go to simplybbox.com and use the code DMA10 to get $10 off. And I think what was such a gift for me, my background is in journalism. And one thing that I wanted to be really intentional about was making sure it wasn't just like the Kayla show, like the Kayla prayers, right? And so <laughs> um, I wanted it to be something where people from a lot of different traditions and backgrounds and denominations could find themselves in on the page. And also in a lot of different situations, right? So whether it's like a joyful situation, like your son or daughter graduating, moving out as they're an adult, I haven't gone through that. My kids are young, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or something that's really, really difficult, you know, like talking through and experiencing, you know, a pregnancy loss or being in the NICU, there are certain things that I haven't experienced. And so I brought in that kind of sacred curiosity and talked with so many moms and dads from different ages and stages and backgrounds um, and listened to the prayers that they would have prayed if they had the words and listened to the cries of their heart. And that is I hope so honoring and evident on the page is that these are already the prayers of so many people and and what a gift to be able to kind of create this collection with those. I would love to talk through with you how a mom would use these prayers. Let's give some examples of situations. You kind of mentioned a few there, but even those are circumstances that she might be walking through. Let's talk through her day. She's in her day. (laughs) She has your book. Let's give her practical, like how to activate using these prayers moment to moment. You know what I mean? Yes. I love that. I love that because I'm in the thick of it too, you know? So it's not like we have this like glorious stretch of (laughs) like bright morning where it's like, ah, what should I do? Oh, you know, maybe I'll just curl up in my perfectly clean house and, (laughs) you know, flip through a book. But uh, I, I created this book to be something that is very tangible and something you can flip through to find what you need and like grab and go right? Like it's not something where you need to sit down and read seven chapters to start to get into, you know, the book. It's truly flip through the contents, the table of contents. And there are, the book is split into eight different sections. So there are prayers for like family milestones, ordinary moments, all the way to prayers of kind of like the cries of our heart of lament for a weary world, prayers for nurturing faith and character, holidays. I mean, just try to be as comprehensive as possible. I could in a hundred and plus prayers, right? But there's also a section at the back, a breath prayer. And those have been so helpful to me. And I know so many um, parents that I've talked to when it's like, you know what? I don't have a lot of margin right now, but I can inhale and I can exhale and I can take that with me throughout the day. So for a busy mom that's listening right now, flip to the back. There's a whole section that is prayer rooted in scripture um, and just like one or two lines to take with you. And just for when you're on overdrive, you inhale, my heart is glad and exhale and my body can rest. And just knowing that's from Psalm 16, nine, and that's something you can take with you. You can put it on a sticky note, you know, you can pray it as you're driving the carpool, uh, as you're changing a diaper, you know, you can even pray that with your kids, but then there's longer prayers that you can go to, you know, say you're wrapping presents the night before 
um, one of your kiddos birthdays I mean, and you can pray over that too, you know? So it's something that you can take with you in the morning or at night, you can pray alone, pray with a mom's group, pray with a partner or a friend or mentor. It's really like yours to use in whatever way it needs to serve you in that moment. You know, I love breath for prayers. When I heard about them, I was like, what? That's an option. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Again, let's yes. break these walls that we've created around prayer as if God is not bigger than anything we've got, you know? Uh, so breath prayers are, I think I have included that in my book. I'm trying to remember what chapter, but that concept. And so I love that you shared that and that they can find more in your, the back of your book. And I think even on your, in your Instagram account, like these are such a gift in those moments, because like you and I were saying before we got on, moms are carrying all these burdens of doing all the things. And I feel like for me, when I say a breath prayer, it is taking in what is actually the gift, which is the oxygen, getting rid of the carbon dioxide. It's a reminder that I am human and limited. And I am in that moment surrendering that there is some a, a God bigger than me who is capable of taking over and helping. And so it's just, it, it's not a small thing. It's not a small thing, although it's a small thing. Yes, I totally, I totally agree. And it's so incredible. I am, you know, a writer. I don't know anything about science. I'm not a neurologist, but <laughs> right, right. I have smarter friends than myself and, and counselors and trauma-informed therapists. And they've talked about, how God just innately wired us and how our brains, even the brain chemistry changes. And we take those deep breaths and we hold it. And then we exhale. It's, it's truly incredible. And it just feels like another way to, to enter into, you know, the healing that God has for us and, and just sitting in God's presence can be really beautiful, even in the chaos of our real lived lives. <laughs> Is there a liturgy that is one of your favorites that we could, you could read? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. So if you don't have the book in front of you, I totally get yes. it. Oh, I, I have the book in front of me. <laughs> Yay! Way to go, Kayla. Is there um, one that you think would fit like our community yes. or this moment that we could yeah. do so that, I mean, she's right here listening. She's taken time out of her busyness to, or he has taken time out of his busyness to listen. We do have the don't dad alone crew. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I love that so much. Well, I think a lot of, um, a lot of us right now are just feeling that sense of overwhelm, the yeah. sense of, of, you know, there's just so much <laughs> happening all the yep. time and we're trying to raise kids and, you know, somehow try to take care of ourselves and it's just a whole lot. And so there is a prayer um, in prayers for the parenting journey section of to light their way, that's a prayer for the overwhelmed. Um, and I would be just so deeply honored to be able to pray that over um, the listeners. So a prayer for the overwhelmed. Oh God, help us resist the lie that we are alone in the swirl of parenting in the world at large, for you hold our children and indeed all of us, in the palm of your hand. Oh God, as we stay awake at night, wondering how we will make it through another week, wondering what our children's lives will look like in the future, give us peace and breathe empathy into us, where the need is all around us. Oh God, help us to focus on right now, even in our exhaustion, in our frustration, and in our loneliness. Help us be awake to you in the world, in the form of a crying baby in our arms, or a child in need of help with homework, or a hungry neighbor on the corner. Oh God, we don't have to tell you that we live in a reality with so much need both in our homes and in our broader communities. And it's easy to feel like whatever we do is just a pebble in the ocean. Oh God, remind us that you are present 
to each individual heart and every communal cry. Give us strength for the day and bright hope for tomorrow. Amen. Y'all take a deep breath now. Breathe that out. That was amazing. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you. One of the coolest things, I think, being a parent is the legacy you leave. Generations you'll touch, not by your life, but by the lives of your children and your grandchildren. And one gift I've given that has helped me connect with the generations that have gone before me and stories of my parents' lives is story worth. I think it is one of the most unique gifts you can give this holiday season. So what is it? Well, Story Worth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve these precious memories and stories for years to come. It's a thoughtful and meaningful gift that connects you to those who matter most. Every week, StoryWorth emails your relative or friend a thought-provoking question of your choice from a large pool of possible options, and each unique prompt asks a question you've never thought to ask. Or maybe you have, but you've never made time or space to find out more. Like when I, my mom received the email and was given the question, what were your grandparents like? I have a little bit of a memory of her grandparents because they both lived into their late 90s, which I kind of thought was what everybody did and have learned that's not the truth. But what I loved is the details she shared in her response are things I'd never known. I had no idea that my great grandmother was a cook for wealthy families in St. Louis or some of the details of how she lived her life between her young years and when I knew her. And so I I'm going to cherish this. I'm going to share it with my siblings. And what's really cool is after a year, StoryWorth will compile all of these stories, including photos, into a keepsake book that you can share and revisit for generations to come. Reading these stories help connect you with loved ones no matter how near or far apart you are. And I think it's really cool because my mom is now retired and living on her own has a bit more time so she can share these stories, which I think we often don't make time to ask or even write down. So if you want to give your loved one a thoughtful, personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come, go to storyworth.com slash DMA. You'll save $10 off your first purchase. That's storyworth, W-O-R-T-H, dot com slash dma for don't mom alone to save ten dollars off on your first purchase i know you a lot of moms are in a position that you're in right now and i'd love if you'd take you know the last part of our interview and just Help her feel not alone if she does have the child who is immune compromised and has been in isolation this last year and a half. I'd love for you to share what's been hard about that or, and how you found ways to make a way out or not even out, just maintain hope in the midst of it. Yeah, I, I honestly, it just has been so hard, you know, so like I said, our daughter Eliza has a compromised immune system. We have another child that has a compromised immune system and um, their pediatrician, I just asked her to be really honest with me about what we needed to do. And she was like, I wouldn't send your kids to school right now in the situation that the, the schools um, are in. And I would just stay hunkered at home as much as you, as you can and as you have the ability to do. And so that means that we have had a lot of quality time <laughs> for a while now. <laughs> um, and there, there have been glimmers of great joy and thoughts of like, oh, wow, we might have missed some of this time and, and these experiences together. But that doesn't take away from the heart. It can be both. And it feels hard because it is hard. Um, there, there's no other way around it. Uh, parenting so isolating no matter what and being a mom 
it's just, I don't know, like I'm waiting for it to get easier <laughs> and it just seems to be like, it just changes, right? The things that are harder change, but I just want to say, you know, to, to anybody that's listening that has had to make changes and has been on the outside, you know, kind of looking, looking at what everybody else is doing and wondering like, where do we go? You know, like we, we're trying to, to, to love our children and, and do what we need to do to keep them safe, but also feeling that deep sense of loneliness. I would just say, even in those moments where you feel like you're alone, you're not alone. This is not going to last forever, even when it feels like maybe it has. Um, and to remember to take care of yourself, right? Like that cliche is so true. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And so it's finding ways to cure, you know, for yourself. And that's something I have had to, to figure out is what are things that I can do to kind of replenish my own heart and mind and body and soul, you know, and, and whether that's like, taking time for me to write because I'm a verbal processor and I write, get outside, take a walk, like breathe in the beautiful fall that's happening. I love to go thrifting. My husband would say I do that too much (laughs) (laughs) as the house starts, you know, (laughs) filling up with more and more. Yes. But it's like finding those pockets where you can, you know, still be able to care for the people around you, but also remembering that you are worthy of care and um, you need to take rest and to fill yourself up too. Do you have people who like, how are you managing getting help from other people without compromising the health of your family? Yeah. My parents have truly been like such a gift to, to us. Um, We actually moved back to our hometown in the pandemic. It was a blizzard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, but but they they love my kids so deeply and um have you know taken things very seriously so they could come al- alongside us and be trusted people to step in and, and, you know, help out and watch the kids. So my husband and I can, you know, go on a, on a patio out to dinner or, you know, just have some time not changing diapers and um, heating up chicken nuggets. So (laughs) that, that's been really helpful. And I also think just like having, having people that you can be honest with, and Mm -hmm. sometimes that means you have to go first, but, you know, starting a, a, a group, text thread or, you know, just checking in with people and then also saying like, Hey, like, you know, don't forget about me. (laughs) You know, like I'm still here. Uh, this is what's going on. Um, and then just continuing just, you know, because I haven't been able to do as much in person doesn't mean that I don't ache for that friendship and that interaction. And so it's just getting creative and finding different ways to check in with each other. I can imagine that for me, that would, I have a lot of fear of missing out tendencies. <laughs> and so that's so real. I don't like missing the party. I had one gal, a listener reach out and she's like, it seems like everyone in Texas and in the South is having a big party and none of us were invited. And I feel so sad that that's the impression. And I'm grieving for moms in, in the position you're in. And I, I want to be a better friend. Like, I don't want to throw that in anyone's face, but how, like you said, having those touch points, those text messages, remembering you're there. How is, how have people helped you? So you don't feel like you're missing out. I have a friend that is so sweet. And, um, even though we moved and we're not even in the same town, she'll still like invite me to things. Like she recently had a birthday party and she just like, I know you probably can't come, but I just wanted you to know I was thinking of you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, just having that little bit of inclusion is so sweet. Um, I have had friends who have put little things in the mail, you know, Mm -hmm. or over the summer came up with creative ways to, you know, hang out safely outside, you know, and come out, just brainstorm different things like, oh, maybe we can go to a patio or we can have a bonfire or, you know what I mean? So it's just like everybody's situation is different. So I think that has been 
been really great. And I just think anytime you think I should call somebody or text somebody or send them a message, do it. Yeah. Do just do it. Like <laughs> take, take the one minute, two minutes, whatever it is right then and do it because you really don't know how much the person on the other side might need to hear it. And you might never know, you know, but we need each other. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder that even if you think they might not be able to come or might not come because they haven't, doesn't mean you shouldn't let them know that you would like them there and send the invite. And I think that goes across, you know, people in our situation. Yes. But, you know, new parents, you know, friends or family that might be struggling with, you know, depression or anxiety, you know, just like continually bringing them in, even if that might not look the way you think it would, you know, or a group of moms that maybe they all worked together. And now a lot of them are choosing to stay home and the other mom is going back to work, like still including her in those, that group or like letting them know that you're going to have lunch. Maybe she can orchestrate her calendar. And I don't know. I just think Mm -hmm. not deciding for the person that they can't come (laughs) is good. I love that. Yeah. Well, I am super thankful for you. I'm thankful for this book. Tell everyone the name like the best place to connect with you online. We'll put the links in the show notes too. Yes. So you can find me at Kayla Craig.com. The Instagram account that you were talking about is liturgies for parents. And I am also Kayla underscore Craig on my personal account. And then the book is called to light their way, a collection of prayers and liturgies for parents. And I just have to shout out the design team uh, because they created just like this beautiful kind of hardcover book that's meant to be on your nightstand or on your coffee table. And there's gold. Who doesn't like gold? (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty. Uh, Yeah. 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 And um, goes a long way. That goes a long way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I, yeah, you can find me anywhere on the internet. And I have been told because I know, you know, this too, Heather, the supply chain issues approaching the holidays are super real. Yeah. Um, but I've been told that Amazon is, is fully stocked right now. So that's kind of the best place to go to buy the books. It would be a great gift. I think for yeah, a teacher who's has kids, friends, such a, such a beautiful book. I'm really grateful to connect people with you and with it. And if y'all have experience in international adoption, domestic adoption, um, please connect with Kayla. And I just always love having moms with a variety of stories on the show. And so thank you for being here and for sharing your vulnerable parts and, um, and for your liturgy that you read over us. That's so great. We'll have to maybe pull that in like, put that on YouTube or something. Cause that was wonderful. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. I'm so appreciative of just how you're ministering to, to moms and cheering us on in the trenches. I'm really grateful. Well, I'm glad we finally got to talk. It's about Me time. Too. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kayla. Have a great week. Thank you. Uh, There's a liturgy book that someone gave me. It's called Every Moment Holy, and I love it. I love it. Sometimes when you just need words to connect you with the truth of who God is and the truth of what he can do in your life, you sometimes need someone who's gone before you. And so I love that book. If you need a good gift idea, this liturgy for parents book, it's called To Light the Way by Kayla is a great option and I'm thankful to connect you guys with her. I'm going to pray over us. I I really was struck by what Kayla is going through right now and the challenges specific to those who are still experiencing a lot of isolation in these days and in the winter coming up. Lord, I thank you that we know truth, that we are truly never alone, that you are with us. But Lord, I know the need that you have put in all of us for community and for people and for relationship and for rest. I pray over Kayla and all that she's doing with her family to keep them going with their school studies, with health issues. I pray for her heart that you would 
give her encouragement and hope where she needs it, strength where she needs it. I pray protection over her children, the ones that they're concerned about. Um, And I pray for each mom listening who's in a similar place, who's weary, who's been holding a lot together for a long time time. I pray as we head into the cooler winter months that can sometimes bring a lot of discouragement, I pray that you would be the God of hope who reminds them that this is not forever, that things do change, that seasons do come. I pray that you're supernaturally going to whisper that into their ear right now, the hope that they need to hear. I pray God For all of us to find you in even the most mundane moments that we can see your gifts of grace as we breathe in, as we breathe out, that even the air in our lungs is a gift from you. Lord, I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. I'll meet you back here next week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to all of you who have bought a book. The audiobook is now available. If you are a listener and you don't really read books, you don't have time to read books, but you listen to things, you can get the Don't Mom Alone audiobook and it is read by yours truly. So you can hear me reading you my stories. You can find that on Amazon, through Audible, wherever you get your audiobooks, Christian audiobook, uh, it's available. So thanks y'all for being on this journey with me. I hope you have a fantastic week. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us, moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.